Okay, we're on the homework now for the identities. And so I'll be going through this. We're still in section four of the notes. It's the second part of the homework. And we're going to go through these identities now. And as I do that, um, certainly I want to encourage you to give it a try as well. Um, some people say, I just like watching. It's not going to get you very far. But, um, you know, that's up to you. I mean, if, I, I really mean that. You, if you don't get busy working on this stuff over here, it's probably going to be a very slow process for you. But you're not going to be able to move forward. So let me um, share a whiteboard with you. And again, I'll write on the whiteboard what we're going to be doing. Okay, again, we're in section four of the notes and we're doing the identities. All right, and then someone says, you know, um, you know, where'd the notes go? You, you, the notes are in your possession. They're always in your possession and you should have those in front of you. And I'm gonna do a number, and again, we're in homework. Okay, so I'm gonna write number one down and I'll go through the method that we'd like you to follow. So it says verify this an identity. And what do I see? I see cosecant of X minus the sine of X equals the cotangent of X times the cosine of X. What we're gonna to try to get you to do is pick a side and someone says, I don't know what side to pick. Um, both sides are gonna be relatively simple. What I'm gonna claim over here is I picked a side that provides opportunity for work. I'm gonna say the left side. And I'll tell you why. I'm looking at this thing and it's two terms. And my goal is to get it to one term and it should be the same as the other side, at least conditionally so. So let me write this one down. <coughs> I'm gonna work on this now, one step at a time. I'm gonna write things in terms of signs. So it's gonna be one over sine x minus sine x. I'm gonna combine this into one fraction by getting a common denominator. Here they're one minus sine squared of x. And I recognize one minus sine squared as being cosine squared, okay? And what do I now know? I know this is cosine times cosine and we're dividing by sine. Cosine over sine is going to be, let's write that down for, I'm going kind of in this direction over here now. Cosine over sine is cotangent. Again, I'm kind of moving around, times cosine of X. Hey, we show what we're supposed to show, Q, E, D, okay? Now someone's because I picked the other side and done that. Of course you could have, you could have done that, not a problem. All right, I'm going to number two. Remember, if you get stuck in these things, I would say skip it, go to the next question. So number two, we can get stuck so far, right? And what's this going to be? Sine four minus cosine four, fourth power, by the way, equals sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Again, I'm going to look at the two sides, and I'm going to say the fourth degree polynomial provides more opportunity for rewriting it. Uh, someone says, what are you gonna do with that? I'm gonna factor it. And what would I get over there? Well, sine squared X minus cosine squared X times sine squared X plus cosine squared X. What do I now know? I know I have an identity over here. And what I mean by that is that this thing over his Pythagorean identity is number one. And so one times this thing would be this. Hey, exactly what we wanted to come up with, QED. All right, typically it's rewriting things and seeing if we can work our way to the other side. Let's put down number three. Again, if this is going too fast, what I was gonna say is you have not done the homework. If you've done the homework though, and, and certainly you're still looking at the same, I still don't know what to do, come by during office hours and we'll help you out with it. All right, these are recorded lectures. Um, 
and uh, what I mean by recorded, uh, you may be watching this live, but what I mean recorded, I'm going to post them and you can watch them at some point in the future. So put down number three now. And I'm just writing it down. It's one over one minus cosine x plus one over one plus cosine of x equals, <coughs> excuse me, two cosecant squared. Now, what side allows the most amount of rewriting? I'm going to circle it. And that's what our convention is. We circle things. All right, let's work on it. And I'm going to say common denominator. And why is that? Two terms. Looks like I'm aiming for one term. So common denominator. That's going to be the product of those denominators. And what goes in the numerator would be 1 plus cosine x plus 1 minus cosine x. Uh, let me do the top first. And I, I definitely see that it's, it's really not bad because the cosines disappear on top. That would be the number 2. All right, because 1 plus 1 is 2. Cosines disappear. If I multiply at the bottom, what would I get? I would get 1 minus. Well, you'd get cosine x minus cosine x. They disappear. So we get 1 minus cosine squared. I recognize that, and I recognize that to be sine squared. And I recognize this to be 2 cosecant. We showed, supposed to show QED. All right, let's go to number three. Again, these should not be stumping you. I said, did I say number three? I meant number four. We just did three. <coughs> Well, this one doesn't look easy. Let's take a look at it. And what do you have over here? Secant x plus tangent x squared is equal to one plus sine x, one minus sine x. And someone says, you know, what, what side are you going to pick? And someone says, I don't know what side to pick. I would say you pick either side. Uh, I'm going to pick the right side because I know it's the fraction. And I'm going to try to write that so it's not a fraction. But we'll go through it. And I'm going to circle this and I'm choosing this side here. I'm going to start working with this now. All right. So, you know, one step at a time. And I'm looking at it. And what I would, again, I'm not going to say it's going to work, but I'll try it. So one plus sine x. And on the bottom, I have one minus cosine. I'm sorry, I, I, I said that, but that's not true. It's one minus sine x, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to multiply the top and the bottom by the bottom's conjugate. It may work, it may not work. The thing about uh, moving forward is, is actually moving. All right, let me write that down for you. I'm not, I don't want to really multiply it out, but the top just turns out to be one plus sine x quantity squared. What's the bottom give you? Well, that's, that's their conjugates, right? So it's gonna be one minus sine squared x. That's not so bad. Let me keep going. And I got one plus, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm, I should use my arrows here. Get this eraser right over here, okay? I'm just moving along. So one plus sine x quantity squared on top and the bottom is Pythagorean then it's just cosine squared. Well, I'm noticing that they're both square. So I'm gonna write it as one term squared. That's one plus sine for cosine. We keep going. Again, I notice it's squared. I'm gonna split the two terms. So one over cosine is gonna be secant. plus sine over cosine, which is tangent. Again, we're seeing it, QED. We showed what we wanted to show. That's number four. Let's go to number five. And number five, again, it looks nasty. All right, I, I wanna show you that nothing's gonna be nastier. So sine squared x minus cosine squared x. They claim that this is conditionally equal to tangent x 
minus cotangent x tangent x plus cotangent x. Again, you may say, I don't know what side to pick. I'm gonna pick what I believe to be the easiest side for work anyway. I would say this side over here allows great opportunity in the work department. And so what are you gonna do with that? And there's, there's many things you could do with it. I'm gonna say for the most part, uh, you know, certainly there's quick ways, there's, there's, uh, there's long ways. Your way is the best way of doing things though, right? Provided you follow a truthful path. And I wanna, you know, take a look at it. And I'm gonna start writing this down in terms of sines and cosines now. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So I get sine X over cosine X minus cosine X over sine X. That's not so bad. And sine X, let's see, over cosine X plus, let's see, that would be cosine X. Now remember, if things don't work out, you can easily erase things. It isn't like you have to commit yourself to this being the only path to the truth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply top and the bottom by the minor LCD, which is gonna be cosine X sine X. And there's something you learn in math, I'm gonna say 092. Hey, this looks more abstract, though. there's no doubt about it. This thing here will be distributed across these two terms. This thing here, distributed across these two terms. Well, let's get busy. I'm hoping things work out really nicely. And what would you get over there? Well, the first one, the cosines are counting, it's just sine squared. Minus, and if you did the second one, the sines would cancel off, you get cosine squared. Let's do the bottom, what do you get? And let's see, that times that, cosine would disappear, you get sine squared now. Plus, sine would disappear and you get cosine squared. Well, now I'm seeing it, the bottom, and I want to emphasize the bottom is recognizable to be one. So what's this thing lead to? Very simple. It leads to sine squared X minus cosine squared X, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. Okay, let's go to the next one, number six. Relatively simple. And again, if you get stuck, it's, not, oh, that's great. It's done, there is no six, all right? So I'm gonna just erase that. And when I come back next time, I'm gonna do the homework on the equations, all right? Thank you.